With Exchange 2010, there were three different exchange management options. Well, that's changed now with Exchange 2013. 2013 has both an Exchange Administration Console, an EAC, and that's your web-based GUI management option, and it has an Exchange Management Shell. As an Exchange Administrator, it's important and absolutely necessary that you know how to work with both the EAC and the EMS. Okay, so let's get started. So here you can clearly see that when it comes to managing your Exchange 2013 environment, you have two very different options. On the left hand side, the Exchange Admin Center or EAC. On the right hand side, the Exchange Management Shell or EMS. Now, you may be saying to yourself, well, look, I am going to always gravitate toward the GUI management solution. And that's okay. You can handle most of your tasks through the Exchange Admin Center. There are times, however, when the best way to do something, and sometimes even the only way to do something, is through the Exchange Management Shell. So it's essential that you become comfortable with both. But let's take the easy path first, the GUI Administration Center. Let's jump over to our server and let's review the terminology in terms of the navigation of the Exchange Admin Center. And then we'll go through a walking tour of the Exchange Admin Center so that you can see how easy it is to maneuver through the various features and manage your Exchange environment. Then we'll come back to the slides and we'll talk a little bit more about the Exchange Management Shell. And then we'll get our feet wet when it comes to working with that shell. If you've never worked with PowerShell before, that's okay. We're going to get you started now so that you can become comfortable with it through Exchange 2013. One thing's for certain, it's not going away. So if you thought that this was just a passing fad that Microsoft would give up after a couple of years, well, that's not accurate. It's actually becoming more and more ingrained in every Microsoft product from Server 2012 to Exchange, to SharePoint, to the entire System Center lineup of tools. It's something that's ingrained in everything. So to maintain your relevance as an administrator, you're going to have to learn PowerShell at some point. So it might as well be today. But first, let's take a look at the EAC. So we're going to take a look at the Exchange Administration Center. But before we do that, let's get a little bit more information about the EAC. So one of the things I really love about TechNet is the fact that you can pretty much research anything about Exchange and you'll get an entire article, explanations on how the feature was developed, what you can do with it, the Exchange Management Shell commandlets for it. And so really you want to make good use of TechNet. And with a quick Google or Bing search, you can pretty much find anything you want within TechNet that will help you along your journey of learning Exchange. But even in day-to-day -day administration of Exchange, there are things that you just forget over time and TechNet is really just an excellent resource that you should be constantly tapping into. So here we can see that there's a TechNet article on the Exchange Administration Center. It gives some information about it. It even gives some information about how to access the EAC, the uh, internal and external URL for accessing it. And then you can see down here, there's actually a great graphic that helps you to see what each of the different aspects of the EAC are called, the feature pane, the toolbar, the list view. It's a little hard to see, so I've saved this graphic off to my desktop here. We can see it a little bit better in full screen. And so you can see here that up at the top of your Exchange Administration Center, we have the uh, various cross-premises navigation. This is for situations where you might have an on-premise enterprise deployment of Exchange 2013, and then your Office 365 hybrid deployment so that you can manage both from within the same console. On the left hand side we call this the feature pane. So it's not a navigation pane, it's called a feature pane, so we'll be referring to it as that. And then you'll see as you select a feature that we have the toolbar here and then the list view. So the list view will change as well as the tabs, these will change as well. So depending on what feature we choose, we'll see a different set of tabs and a different list view. The toolbar itself will pretty much stay the same. However, some of the options that we have here will be different. There are notifications when you're doing something. This is not something that you see all the time, but when you're actually in the middle of doing something like, in this case, a migration, it will notify you up here 
at the top. This is actually a great addition to an Exchange Administration console or center in that we didn't have alerts before. So if we were in the middle of a migration and we were doing other things, we would have to go back to the uh, portion of the navigation in order to see that migration and see how we were doing. Up here at the top we have the me tile and help and so this is where you see who you are and you can also switch the user here. We'll see that in a moment. And then over on the right side they call this the details pane. So with an MMC console we would have navigation, we would have a work and results pane in the middle, sometimes both, and then over on the right we'd have the action pane. Now it's called a details pane but there are links that you can select so you can take action from this pane on the right. Okay, so this gives us a little bit of a better understanding as far as the layout of the EAC. Let's actually open up the EAC and let's take a look at these from within our working exchange environment. Just remember, feature pane, we have tabs, we have the toolbar, list view, and details pane. 